Hey, Brother Sewing and Crafting family, Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here, and I'm very excited to see you. I've got a super fun project for you, and it's needed in my family. <laughs> so here, I'll give you a little preview. There you go. Can you tell what that is? I'll give you a really quick hint. <laughs> Tooth fairy. Tooth fairy pillow. So uh, Teresa's little ones are starting to lose their teeth, Carter being first. So I need to make one for Carter, Kira, and Sienna. So that's what we're going to do. But okay, on top of that, <laughs> even if you don't need a tooth fairy pillow, well, I don't know, maybe everyone needs one. But either way, I'm going to show you how to use my design center, my connection with the luminaire and the scan and cut, and how to scan something in. There's going to be so many tutorials in this. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're on Facebook, share it to your page so you can watch it over. It's best to watch it all the way through first, and then you can go back and play and stop. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, and also you can share it and save it as well. So I see you all rolling in. It's so nice to see you all. So we are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting YouTube and Facebook pages because we're using the Scan and Cut and the sewing machine and the embroidery machine. All right? So I'll just do a quick sound check. I've got a lot of cameras set up so I can keep you all running very smoothly. Great to see you all. Hey, Cindy. So, by the way, did you catch all the videos last week on all the new products coming out? So I hope you've had a chance to visit your brother dealer, call them, maybe go play on some of the new things, or at least put your name on the list for what's coming because it's very cool. A lot of fun stuff. So today I'm going to be using uh, the Scan and Cut SDX, I think it's the 330D, I have to double check. Let me... Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's the Disney model with the D. And also I'm using the Luminaire 2 because I already had that set up with my connection. So if you have the Luminaire 2, you might already have this on your machine. Now, I know not everybody has all of that, so don't worry. Everything I show you, how many of you have my design center on your machine? Many of you. So a lot of the things I'm showing you, you're going to be able to do as well. And if not, then you can still make do by using a USB stick going back and forth from the scan and cut back and forth, all right? Okay, everyone, I see you all. Hey, Star, it's beautiful in Michigan today. So let me take you over. So again, here is a preview of the project. And I'll just uh, give you a quick look at that. So these letters are all cut on the scan and cut, and then we turn them into applique. And this little guy, we scanned in, and we embroidered all of this on it. This is just a white piece of felt. And then we've got just some lace to hang it on the edge of his bed. And on the back side, I have two little flaps, you know, to leave the Tooth Fairy a note. And the Tooth Fairy, if you're good, can leave you some money right here. Super fun, right? Okay, so what size do you want your pillow? It really depends on how long your name is. So I'm starting with a piece, and I'll show you, I'll walk you through everything, but you're going to need... I'm using just a fleece fabric. You can use any fabric you want. I'm using fleece. The back side was felt. My letters are felt and fleece. So a combination of everything. All right, you're gonna need tearaway stabilizer. Of course, I'm using the Brother brand. Maybe stop into your dealers and grab some tearaway. It's um, tearaway. It could be cutaway too, either it doesn't matter. But it's sticky. So I can lay the fabric right on it. I also have the scan and cut. I'm using just a standard mat and I'm using the rotary blade. I think that's about it. You're gonna need a little bit of ribbon or some trim to hang it from the bed or the door, wherever it's going. That's about it. And then the last thing that we'll do is stuff it with some stuffing. So let's get started. I'll make sure I can see you all. I don't see anybody saying that you can't hear anything, so we'll just keep rolling. And it's so great to see you. Yeah, Zena, there was definitely a lot of, a lot last week, a lot of tutorials. All right. Let's head over. I've got a setup right here and check it out. I know. So that image right there <laughs> is not a brother product. It is a tooth. You can draw your own. I went online and did an internet search, you know, internet search. And there, you, do you know how many teeth are on there as an image that you can have for free? Yeah. So it's just line art. And that's literally, you could probably do that yourself. But anyways, I printed it off. You can see it's quite large, but that's how it printed. I thought we would just start with that. I have it on the scanning mat. 
If you're using the Stellar, you could also use, well, actually, or the Luminaire, you could use the app and take a photo. But I thought I would just do this in a few different steps to show you how this works. All right, so let me just take your, welcome everyone, say hi, in case you didn't know. And now let's go take a look at what we have going on over here. All right, so again, this is just a little tooth. I found it online. I'm using my magnetic mat. I didn't think you really needed to watch me do all that. So I just laid the piece of paper on here. All right. Now let's go to our screen here. Click on my design center up here. Make sure that's high enough there for you. We're gonna scan the mat in. And you have these options here. You've got image scan, line design, illustration. I'll just do line design. Well, actually, you can really do any of these. Why don't we do illustration? All of these end up a little differently, but how we're gonna end up putting them together is really interesting. So now you can see that it's scanning. I have my green magnets out of the way. And on this side, it just says recognizing. It takes a few seconds to do this. Again, you could take a photo with the app. The Snap app. I saw somebody asking, the new, the new app? No, 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 my design app. Um, oh my gosh, I just totally lost the name of it. <laughs> Where you take a photo and it pops into your machine. All right, so there we go. And now here on this screen, it, you have a lot of options, but first of all, we wanna just bring this in. And, Cause we don't wanna embroider all of those green marks, right? Okay, click okay. Just takes a second. And by the way, if for those of you that saw me playing on the Luminaire 3, this is much faster now, which is awesome. Okay, so there is our design. Click set. All right, so this one has a solid outline, okay? That was for the illustration. I wanted to show you something else. Uh, on what I have over there, I have an outline on the inside and an outline on the outside. If I do it like this, that's gonna be a real thick line. So let's go back and scan that one more time and let's do a line design. I know I'm using my fingers. I'll try to get them out of your way. Or I'm using the new stylus from the XP3. I love how these can all just go from one machine to the other, right? All right. Um, I'm going to do just a straight stitch. We'll do a triple stitch. Click OK. And now I have two, out, two outlines, which is what I want. So for the inside line, I'll bring you just a little closer here just to make sure you can see that. Really good. So for the inside line, I'm going to turn that into a triple stitch. And the outside line is going to be a satin stitch, which is going to attach the tooth to the pillow. All right, click set. Bring you back out. And go ahead and you guys can ask your questions. I can't quite see them from way back here, but I'll be sure to stop um, at the end and take them for you. So you can get rid of the background if you want just by clicking this up here or bring it back on. It doesn't matter. That's what we have. All right, now, if you want, I'm just gonna grab that pillow real quick to show you. So take a look at this. You can see that the inside line, this is the triple stitch, and this is the white satin stitch on the outside. Now, how did these get on there? Well, I drew them all on my design center. So let's go back over. Oh, 
I'm walking around the studio very carefully. It's kind of like a jungle gym here. <laughs> All right. So in here, I want to draw. I need some eyes and eyelashes. So here we have this. Now let's go ahead. Do you want to change the size? This is pretty big. So under the size, just go here. Oops, I'm sorry. Under size. Uh, you can make it any dimensions that you want. So I can bring this in. Making it a little smaller. I'm going to get rid of the background. And then also, you can go in here and give it exact measurements. And I did. I think I did something around four or four and a half. There's one. And then here, why don't we do 4.5 here? Mm, that's a really weird looking tooth. Click reset. Make sure I have both of these collected together. And now let's make it a little smaller. That's better. When I had when I didn't have them grouped, it was like one was getting bigger and not the other. All right, so that's about five and a half by five. That's a pretty good size. And again, you can go in this icon right here and change this up if you want a little different. All right, now we need to add a couple eyeballs. Whatever shape you want for your eyeballs. I mean, I guess it's your thing, right? <laughs> now, I'm just picking the one with just an outline. Again, I'm going to click Size and bring that in. I'll bring you just a little bit closer here. I know I'm going to need the eyeball to fit inside of there, so... Just click on here. There's the eyeball. <laughs> Actually, it's the fill. Hold on a second. That's what I get for hitting the wrong buttons. Okay. We need to make it a little bit smaller. like all these little noises. I feel like I'm playing a little video game. All right, I need to go back. For some reason, I have an extra, I had an extra circle for some reason. Okay, there's the circle. Now I'll quit just moving it around. I'll use these little icons to move it. And a little bit smaller. Click OK. And what do you want that to be? What stitch do you want that to be? I'm just going to turn that into um, just actually just a single stitch will be fine. Triple stitch will show up a little better. So it's really your option. I also want to change the color. So let's change that to red. Just so I can see what's going on here. All right, let's go ahead and pick this circle right there, duplicate it, and let's move this over. All right, now let's add another circle. If I start with a big one, that's pretty, pretty big. So let's go back. I'm just, all you have to do is take that out if you want. I'm going to go back to that original circle. Duplicate it four times. And once I do that, I can actually turn one into a little eyeball. And I'll grab my little pillow here so you can see it. See this? So this is one circle, this is another circle. I know it's a little hard to see on the screen. And there's this black line in here, this is just the inside, and then there's my very sloppy smiley face. 
All right, so I'm going to actually clear all this out because I've already done this, and I'm just going to bring it up for you. In here, see all these little guys I made? <laughs> I know, I had a lot of fun with this, so let me just bring one of these up for you. There you see, I did the eyes. All I did to, to get all those, I'll bring you in really close here. All I did to get all those little eyebrows is just do the pencil icon. And I just drew just like this. Can you see those? Now I'm making them a little bigger so you can see. So these were the eyebrows that you see here. And then for the smile, I'll make it big. I just drew a smile just like that. Now, I made those bigger, so let me get all those out of there. In case you didn't know, you can undo anything that you do. Okay, so there's my icon. So here I have the outside line, the inside line. I've got the eyes, all of that ready to go. The one thing I want to check, though, is on here. If I go here. Let's choose the outside line. That's the outside one. I want to make sure that's a different color because that's going to be white to match my, that's going to be white to match everything that I'm working on. So let me click on here. And we're going to make that a satin stitch. And I'll just color it uh, purple for now because you won't be able to see white on my screen. All right, so after this, and if you want to see it bigger, you can click up here. See it as big as you want. Make sure everything looks okay. I usually save it at this point. Then click Next. And in the next screen is where you have a lot of options. So there is my tooth. <laughs> so as you scroll through these icons right up here, it will tell you what it's going to embroider, what color. So for the outside line, again, I'm going to change colors because I don't want it all to be one color or else I won't be able to separate it. Okay, so now my outside, I colored it purple, but I know that I'm going to do that with white. Now, when I went to do this one, you have a few options. I actually just started stitching. It started here and went around. Then I put my fabric underneath to leave that opening. If you don't want to do that and you want to have it completely separate, then you might want to duplicate this because you'll want to do the stitching first here and then put this on your fabric to finish, if that makes sense. So this is also uh, just, it's like a fleece, so it doesn't fray. So if you decide to only attach this bottom part, I'll show you how to skip stitches. You're not going to even notice that that isn't stitched up there. All right, and then all of the other things, I'll just scroll through here. Do we want that a straight stitch or a triple stitch? We'll go with triple, just so you can see it a little better. I love how it shows you exactly how it's gonna show up here. Okay, next we have our eyelashes. Just a single stitch is fine for those. And we have our eyes. And we have our mouth. <laughs> I think it looks pretty good overall. Looks like um, maybe a Halloween something at this point, but okay. So a couple of things, I'm gonna save it to memory. I always save it to memory before I go on. So save it to the machine, then click set, click okay. Now in the embroidery side here, you have a lot of options. Now I know I wanna embroider this, but I wanna cut this on the scan and cut as well. So I'm gonna to change to a different hoop as well, but let's go into memory. And in memory, I have the option to send this. You see that little icon down there? You have to click memory. I always forget that too. I should put a big post-it note. Click memory. When I click that, it will say, you know, how are you transferring it? Is it going, we're transferring it right to the scan and cut. Make sure my scan and cut's on. All right. So that little buddy transferred to the scan and cut that fast. 
well, actually faster. I went over to see if it was on there. <laughs> All right, so I wanna embroider this. I'm going to do the eyes, I'm gonna do the outline, and I need to do this on a hoop by itself with the white fabric. Now, let's go to the scan and cut. All right. If I go in here, I'm clicking the back button, going to my connection. I want to retrieve wirelessly. Again, you could use your USB stick if you don't have all of these. And there we have the entire thing. Do I want to cut the entire thing? No. So let's just go. Is that the size we had? It sure is. Click OK, and it gives you each option. Which one do you want to cut? Well, I want to cut this outside outline. Click OK, click Set. It shows up on my screen right here. All right, so here's my standard mat. You can see the last one that I cut out. Kind of cute, right? All right, I'm just gonna lay this flat. So this again, this is just like a fleece. Kind of sticky. I know white looks a little hot on the camera, but we needed white because hopefully your teeth are white <laughs> or at least the ones you're losing. And then let's go here. I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit here just to show. All right, we're gonna scan in our mat. And while that's scanning, I'm grab. I'm using my rotary blade. You've heard us talk a lot about that, and uh, it is just a really fine rotary blade. It works on fabric so nicely. Am I using the fabric mat? No, I did not find a need to. This wasn't even tricky at all. It just it just worked. So you could use a fabric mat though if you wanted to. All right, and then on the screen, let's go back to the screen here. I'm just going to move this down just a little bit because I have the top edge of my fabric not showing. I could scan in and look for my fabric. I don't need to because I've got a whole piece on there. So click OK. What do we want to do with it? We're going to cut. All right, while that's cutting, let's go over here and get our stabilizer. I have two hoops here because we're gonna need a hoop uh, for the pillow and for the tooth. So this is, again, sticky back tearaway stabilizer. I'm gonna just rip all this off. And as soon as that's finished cutting, we'll place this on first because we want to embroider the eyes and everything on the tooth first here because we're gonna have an opening at the top of the tooth. All right, there's our tooth. Whoop, there's our tooth. Isn't that easy? Now, again, if you don't have a scan and cut, you could just cut after you put an outline, just turn it into an applique, but this is really easy to do. Okay, so let's put this on the hoop and back to the machine. All right. Let's take this scanning mat off. I called my sister to see if Carter was watching to know that his uh, tooth is coming, his tooth fairy pillow, but he's in kindergarten today for his first day. So little guy's gonna have a lot of fun. All right, now we just put this in place. How do we know that the embroidery here is going to be in the right place. Well, we don't really. So let's click embroidery. Uh, here I know that when I get to this blue part here, that's the outside part. That's the part I know I want to do with white. I'm leaving it blue so you can see it. But as I go through here, it'll tell me how many minutes it's going to embroider and what section it's going to embroider. So click on embroidery. 
And then one of my favorite features is the projector. Now, I, this is going to be super tricky to see because it's white on white. I know it looks kind of like a, the, you know, the usual rainbow that we get. Let's see if you can see it a little better in this one. Mm, barely. Now, I do have options to change the background to dark, black, or white. Bring you a little closer just to see if you can. Yeah, that's pretty hot. Everybody have their sunglasses on? <laughs> so if I hold my hand here, you can actually see my icon from the screen. All right. So you're just going to have to trust me. And I'll show you how I'm going to move this around just to make sure that it fits right. So on this screen here, I right now I can see that this is way off. So when I move the box around, that will show me exactly where it is on here. And right now, the lower part of my teeth are right there. So I'm going to slide this down. And as I'm moving the design, I can actually see it right on my fabric. Now, when I go to the darker color, you'll see it much better. But I had to use white for a tooth. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks, and then as I move this red box around, that's how you can see where the entire design is. And I see it's just a little bit off at the top. And let's look down a little bit more. All right. And again, when I do this box, it just moves my frame around and tells me that there's the eyeballs. Probably see it in my hand better, actually. Nah, that won't work. Well, you'll just have to trust me. It looks fantastic. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna embroider are the eyes. And I have a few different uh, colors here to use just to make sure it looks the same. So first I have white in the bobbin. Cause you're not gonna see it anyways, it's gonna be on the back side. I'll just thread my machine real quick here with the black. I'm just going to stop that just for a second. My little beginning thread, I'm just going to cut that off. All right. Do you have any questions for me while that is embroidering? Can you turn the light off? I could, but I my camera lights, I think, are going to ruin that anyways. So when I do the darker piece of fabric, you'll see it much better. So yes, yes, I agree, Shirley. Um, yeah, Linda, the Luminaire, that is, I'm using the XP2 right now without the upgrade. So this was, uh, the my connection came out last year. And yes, the Luminaire 2 can be upgraded to the XP3, which will have all the new embroidery designs uh, and all those things that we showed you last week. All right, any other questions for me before I go back over and keep making our little guy? Oh, that would be so cute, Linda. That would be so cute. Oh, I know, I just learned that because now I have to make some for the other girls too. <laughs> All right, the eyeballs are done. Keep asking away. I'll come back over here and check for you. But in the meantime, let's go back over and finish our project. All right, so there's my eyes. Uh, they look pretty good. And next we have on the screen, that's the outline. I'm going to save that for later, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Let's go to the next thing, which is the inside line and the other half of the eyes. It's funny how they kind of capture these, right? <laughs> Let's just click OK and embroider.
Now, while that's working, we need to work on our letters, all right? So let's go back to the scan and cut over here. I'll bring you back up here. In case you're wondering what it's doing, it's stitching that inside line right there. All right, to the scan and cut while it's sewing. We're going to start over here. And this time, let's go to my connection. We want to send something, right? Now, sending, this always gets me a little confused, but you can send from your machine memory, which in my memory, I don't think I have anything. Oh, I do. I did save. I saved Carter from yesterday. Or... You can use a pattern built into the machine, except for Disney designs, all right? So, just take a quick look. Oh yeah, it's looking good. I love that you can draw in my design center. So let's go in here and pick some letters. Why are we doing this in the scan and cut? Because I'm gonna cut these on the scan and cut, and I'm gonna send these to the embroidery machine and turn them into uh, an applique. Okay, so why don't we go for Kira this time? Okay. Oh, goodness, Teresa. I sure hope I spell her name wrong. I always get her and Sienna backwards. One has two R's and one has K-I-E-R-A. If not, then we'll be sending this off. <laughs> She's my godchild, too. You would think I'd know how to spell her name. Okay, Kira. That looks good. I can see it right here. I can make it larger or smaller. I'm just going to leave it at this size. It looks fine. Click set. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. If you look down, I just put some, this is just some felt fabric on the mat. The mat's super sticky, so I just laid that in place. And now we'll go ahead and uh, I could scan in the mat if I want to see where my fabric is, so why don't we just do that? And while that's happening, let's go back here. Oh my gosh, he's turning out so cute. I didn't think this guy could turn out any cuter, but he does. All right, back to the scan and cut. Oh, you know what? It hit the back. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the machine. I have something right behind the mat here. Let me just turn this off. Only because we're live, right? All right, I have not had that happen before, so that was a little weird. All right, on the embroidery side, while the machine is rebooting, you can see we're almost finished there. All right, we are finished. Now, I mentioned earlier that if you want to stitch across the top of here with some white, you can. Otherwise, you're going to remove this, and we will do that outside stitch right onto the other fabric. Um, it's a little tricky, but I've got a great idea for you. So click OK. Now, again, our second stitch here is the one that we wanted to use. So let me just go back and get our mat back. 
That was crazy. Okay, rebooted, we're all good to go. I'll make sure I don't have anything behind it this time to bump on. Let's go back over here. I have my fabric for, this fabric here is for the pillow. So I can either rehoop this or put this underneath. So let's see which side is the right side. This is the right side. I'm just going to gently lift up the hoop a little bit because this is going to go right into the middle. Now, how big of a pillow did I cut? Just by the way, let me just show you just because I know you're going to ask. I cut this bigger than I'm going to need for the pillow. But Sienna's name's a little bit longer than Carter's. So this is 18 inches by 12, 10 and a half. That gives me plenty of room to cut around everything I'm working on. And it's fleece, it's inexpensive, right? So let's go back over here. I'm gonna place this right underneath. You can tape it in place if you want. You could also put it on another mat, which I will be doing. But for now, I'm gonna leave it just like this. I know it's on the far left side, Nice and flat. Let's go back over to this screen here. And I know I want to do this outside one. So when I click on plus, let's go to the next color, which is that blue. And this will do a nice satin stitch on the outside. Now there's a green button right here. That tells me that's where it's going to start stitching. So if I want the top end to be open, but I still want it to be finished, let's go back here. I'm going to take this out, leave that in place, put in my white thread. Let me grab that real quick. Now, again, you don't have to do it this way, but if you want every edge finished, you'll have to either make a second outside seam. And just in my design center, you can erase the parts you don't want. I found when it decided to embroider like this, I found this to be the easiest. So let me just rethread here with some white because I don't want this really to show. It's just to finish the edges and attach this to the pillow. What would we do without our automatic needle threaders? I don't know. <laughs> Buy thicker glasses, I suppose. All right. so. I took the fabric out from underneath. I'm gonna let it stitch from here to here on the machine. First, it'll go all the way around. Guess what? It's going the other way. <laughs> Yesterday, it went the other way. Okay, let's go back here. I'm going to start that all over, and let's go ahead and put our fabric underneath. I knew there was one way it went. I guess it was just you had to have enough coffee, right? So slide your fabric underneath here, or rehoop it and put it in a new hoop if you want. I'm just going to cut my thread here and start over. All right, now I'll slide the fabric under. Make sure it's nice and flat. Again, if you wanna tape it to the back, you can. This is pretty stable. It's just a small hoop anyways. We're starting back over. I started that stitch over and let's do that again. Now we'll just go ahead and attach, attach it to the bottom. I'm gonna hit stop right here because I don't wanna stitch it from here to here. So I'll take you back to the screen and show you how to skip stitches. Come under here. Go plus 10. And as I do that, as I hit plus 10, watch what happens. You can actually see the machine move. About there looks good. Now we'll go ahead and stitch. It'll go all the way around.
So now it's actually stitching the thread, right? And it's okay that it's breaking through the stabilizer. We're gonna break that off anyways. And then once I get back around to about here with the satin stitches, I will stop it. All right, let's go back to the scan and cut on here. Again, we have our rotary blade that I'm gonna put back in. When I reboot it, I take everything out just to make sure everything's fine. Go into my connection. We're gonna send. Did I save Kira? I did not. So let's go back and put in Kira. Okay. Click okay. I have it right here, let's click set. And where do you wanna move this? Anywhere you want. I've got a big piece of fabric down here. As you can see. So I'm just putting it somewhere in the middle just to make it fast. But if you're using a little piece that you have to make sure that it works right, you'll wanna scan it. All right, and my bobbin ran out. Okay, let's cut our, our um, letters here. And we also wanna transfer. So I'm gonna save this, number one. Saving, saving. And the good news is I already have a bobbin all in place, ready to go. Okay, it's saved. And now let's transfer. And yes, it's okay. Okay, it should be in the luminaire. So there's our letters. So now why don't we take this? Uh, I'm gonna click home. I've already saved it to memory, right? Let's go to the bottom. I didn't, I sent it. So let's go back in here under Kira. And because I want this is kind of important. Um, you want them just make your letters when you cut them. I like to make them just a smidge bigger because I'm going to do a blanket stitch. So when I put this in there now, and click set, edit, and we can move it around. So let's just go ahead and move it down a little bit to make sure that it's going to be within the fabric. Click OK. Object edit, you have a ton of options here. I just want to make it just a little bit bigger. That's it. Then I know my stitches will capture that. Click OK. OK. And now let's go ahead and cut. All right, we have to load our mat. and now start. And I'll take you over here to this screen right here. As you can see, I cut out Carter a couple times and it came out so nice, just perfect. All right, I'm just gonna throw a new bobbin in real quick. All right. And we're just about finished with that section anyways. You can see it cutting, whoops. <laughs> or you can see my floor, whichever one you want. Here you go.
All right, and then on the embroidery machine, we're just about to the top where I want to stop. I'll just click stop. And then right here, I'm just going to do a stay stitch, make sure it locks in place. And cut that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. I'll bring it over to the table for you. She's still cutting away. All right. I'm going to go ahead and unhoop this. Look at how cute that is. And I've got a little opening for some money. So this was all drawn in my design center. By adding that satin stitch on the outside, I was able to attach it all the way around. And again, there's many ways to do this, but this is just a fun, easy way to use a lot of the features on the machine. All right, I need another hoop here. This time, it goes in the machine this way, and I know I'm gonna need this much space for my letters. So I'm just gonna layer, again, it's sticky back tear away. Just layer my fabric here. Now you can see why I make this just a little bit bigger. That way I can make the pillow whatever size I need for the name. I mean, Angela would take a long ways and Wynn would only take a few steps, right? I think we're beyond the tooth fairy stage, but you never know. Now, if I if I talk to my sister and she tells me I spelled her sister, my niece's name wrong, I've, I'm gonna be in big trouble. But as you can see, there's Kira. Well, the good news is I have a lot of fabric. Okay. Now, I can't just lay that that way. Let's go to the machine. I already have. Go back to the Luminaire. And if I click on Home, go into my Design Center, go under here where the shapes and sizes are, and up here on the right is the scan and cut icon. And I can see everything here. And look at Kira just popped up. Perfect. Okay, there's the letters. I know it's the exact same size. Let me just make that I'll bring you in so you can see. See how great that is? All right, so I'm gonna put this on the hoop and I will turn my lights down just a little bit so you can see this. All right, I'm just gonna take these letters off for now because I don't need them. Slide this in place. And let me just turn my light down just a little bit. There are a lot of settings in here. <laughs> All right, light, let's just turn that way down. There you go. How's that, better? Now it's gonna be really dark, but you'll be able to see uh, when I do the projector. So he right here's the word, Kira, or whatever name you have. Let's go into rotate. We're gonna rotate it to the left. So then it'll line up on my fabric. Let's click okay. Now the first stitch, I'm gonna do two of these. The first one I want is just a straight stitch, okay? So here's my straight stitch. This will just be my placement. So I just wanna choose one line, click okay, click next. And again, I just want a single stitch on all of these and see how it just chooses one there's only one red box, so click on the link button right here. All right, then I can get them all at the same time. There we go, now there's the rest. Single stitch, because that's just gonna be my applique position coming from the machine. Again, there are different ways to do this. I've just found this to be the fastest and easiest. So put that in the memory, because I'll take that back and I will turn it into um, where we have it with the blanket stitch, okay? 
So now it's embroidery. Click on embroidery. Let's hit the projector this time and see where on our blanket these letters are going to go. I can change the background different ways. You can still, you can barely see it right here. So this is where K-I is. The K-I is. <laughs> and I know I want to move the letters a little closer here and kind of center it with my tooth. So I'm just going to move it down and over just a little bit. Click OK. And I'm just going to change to some purple thread real quick. And that will give me the placement lines for my letters. The letters are already cut. Now, you could put, if you wanted to, I could have put um, some uh, stabilizer on the back side of those letters, you know, where you can press them in place. The fleece and the felt pretty much stick to each other. I mean, they just literally stick. So you have a few different options, and maybe you don't have that on hand either, right? So let me just turn my light back up so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. And we'll click the placement lines. I'm just going to stop so I can cut my the beginning of my thread there. So while that's embroidering the letters, I just want you to take a look at what's in how you put this together then. So if you look closely, I made a blanket stitch around each of these. Now, if you don't have an embroidery machine, you could actually, you know, just sew around those or do free motion. I added ribbon to the top. Now I could cut this, so I don't know if they want to put it on the door or on the side of the bed. Just, you know, if you've got little kids in the room, be careful though, because, you know, you don't want a long hanging things on the side of their bed. So be careful of that. So I ended up cutting the pillow right around the edge so I knew that the name would fit. So whatever size your name is, that's how big I cut it. On the back side, I cut the under piece here the exact same dimensions as the top piece, okay? But then I also left a little, which is about half the width of felt. Felt doesn't fray, so I didn't finish the edges. I just layered these on top of each other, sandwiched them right side together, and sewed all the way around. This is attached inside. If you forget to put these on, you can attach these later. But if you locate these just like this, I sewed right across to keep them in place. Make sure that this is all wrapped up inside when you sandwich all this together. And then I stitched from here all the way around to this side, stuffed it with some batting, or if you've got scraps of fabric, that works good too. And then I hand stitched this closed so you wouldn't see it. All right, so let's take a look at how these letters are turning out. because we're just about finished. I'm just gonna show you how to turn these into a blanket stitch and what I put on top of this to make sure that my letters didn't go anywhere. All right, I love that noise. And we are just about finished. So you can start asking your questions. I'll roll in and answer those. So I have tear away, wash away stabilizer. It's really light, it's like little paper. Just, if you're sweaty, don't touch it <laughs> because it will melt. This is what I'm gonna put on top of those letters to make sure they stay in place. Now again, you could use some spray, a little bit of glue to hold those in place, or I could have put a backing on there and press those right down. Now, when you're pressing fleece and you're pressing felt, sometimes it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, all right? 
So let's go back over here and I'll show you how this worked. I added a basting stitch around the entire thing. <laughs> Darlene, I just saw your comment. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, squirrel. <laughs> I'm walking away. I saw Darlene saying, is it really that quiet? Yeah. I, well, actually, even with me tripping over stuff when I accidentally put my scan and cut too close to something and hit something behind it, only because it's live, right? <laughs> um, no, Kira is a girl. Carter's a boy. Kira's a girl, at least in uh, my family. Uh, and this Luminaire does not have the three upgrade yet. So if you have the Luminaire 2, did you get the upgrade uh, with the Luminaire 2, the Part 2 upgrade, then you would. And you know what? There's updates also to your machine. So make sure you get those updates. Those are free. Upgrades aren't. Updates are. So keep your questions rolling in. I'll go back over here and uh, finish this up and then come back in and make sure I have time for your questions. Okay. Back over here. So I have my letters. I'm gonna just go ahead and add my K. I can see, can you guys see on there? Uh, let's see if I can bring you a little closer. Can just barely see the outline of the letters on here, which is what I wanted. Now I cut the letters just a smidgen bigger on purpose. Back here to the screen, let's go ahead. I know it says it's finished embroidering. But let's go in here and turn these letters. I want to turn these into blanket stitches. So it'll keep the letters down. It'll be, look very cute. So click on home. Go into my design center. Click on, oops, here, memory. Uh, there's Kira. Click OK. Sorry, I always have it using my, my hand. So there's the letters I have. Now, I want to turn those into something different. They have all these different unique stitches. Aren't those great? And those of you with the XP3, now you'll have a custom where you can bring in your own custom stitches. All right, we have that saved. Click Next. Let's go ahead and link all of these together. I must have hit the wrong button. Let's make this uh, black because you'll be able to see it better. look really close. Let me make this bigger, actually. Can you see that? It actually makes the, this is what the stitches are going to look like. Just by touching a button, it's all going to be Kira with a blanket stitch holding my letters in place. How easy is that? Now, a couple more things we have to do. Click OK, because this is going to turn into embroidery. On the edit screen here, um, I don't need to do anything here. The size is fine. When I go into embroidery, number one, I want to add a basting box, which is right here. That added a box, which is going to hold this stabilizer down in place after I put the letters over it. But I also need to check and make sure that, remember I moved my letters around a little bit before? Now I need to use the projector and double check that Kira is going in the right place. So let me take this off, go down here to K. And looks like I need to move it down just a little bit. That yellow is very bright. It's kind of a little tricky to see. There, that looks really good. Let me go down here to the A and just see what that looks like down here. Yeah, it looks like everything's in place. So now take your letters, lay them down here. And now you all are going to laugh if E was supposed to go before I. And my sister, I'm sure, is going to send me a text message about this in any minute. <laughs> all right, there's our I. If I get my hands out of the way. And see, these basically just hold right in place. And I'm using that outline that we had to place these down. Now let's put our wash away stabilizer on here. Click OK. All 
It shows me it's going to do the basting box first. And while it does that, I want to make sure that my hands are close to here just to make sure that the letters don't move around at all. So I'm just going to hold this wash away topper in place. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just like keeping this nice and flat. You could use tape too, whatever you want. But now that's kept my letters nice and flat and it's going to be ready for those beautiful blanket stitches. All right, while that's embroidering, I will come back over here and check on your questions. All right, <laughs> so it's quite the project, but I told you there was gonna be a ton of features in here that you probably have on your machine. Some of you have my design center from before, like before the XP3. Get these lights off my glasses, then I could probably see you guys. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so by the way, I'm gonna put this up here because if you share this, you gotta use hashtag brother sews. I would love to see what you're working on on this. And this is basically how it ends up. Super, super cute. So if you have questions and I missed them earlier, go ahead and ask again because I'm standing right here and can answer. <laughs> Debbie. Uh, Shirley, so the first one was tear away or it could be cut away, stabilizer, either one for the beginning. And that's wash away, tear away, it's wash away. It's that clear film that you put on the top. It's a topper. So you might use it on towels, things like that when you're doing embroidery. Yeah. All right, what other questions do you have for me? This has been a fantastic hour with you. Oh, Lois, how did I get that tint of, okay, this is really funny. It just happened that way. I didn't do it. <laughs> it was one of those. It must have just had like a little bit of tint when it scanned in with the highlights. So I know, I love it too. So now I know, where do you go get that design? Just go do an internet search for tooth. You'll come up with like hundreds. And a lot of them are free to download, which is what I did. And then draw away on my design center. And by the way, that new stylus is awesome. Because when I was using the older one, it was kind of big when I did that smiley face. That's why this one looks a little bit like uh, <laughs> his mouth is still hurting from losing his tooth. I don't know. But you know, it's on, it's on flannel and you can hardly see it anyways. All right, what are the questions do you have for me? You're right, Vicki. I have the update, but not the upgrade on that one. Oh, Vicki. So there's different options when you scan in on the machine. One is an illustration where it, it ends up adding fills to everything. One is a line drawing. And one is, what's the third one? Oh. Illustration, line drawing. I just forgot the third one. But they're each different. So what it does is when it scans it in, it might automatically add a fill to your item. So when I first did the tooth, I did it as an image scan just to see what would happen. And it actually filled in the whole tooth with satin stitches. So, and as you try each one, see which one you need. Do you just need the outline? Do you want the whole thing filled? Are you doing a whole colorful? Um, so they're all different. Okay. I think I'm making sure I'm not missing any. Oh no, Darlene, your needle threader broke. I feel for you. I've done that twice. I did it from trying to put metallic thread in a really small needle. That didn't work out very well. Yeah, Mertis, it's felt. So the colorful fabric is fleece, and then the purple is felt. All right? If I had more felt, I probably would have um, even done maybe different colors for Kira. I might have done hers pink or um, green. The girls like green and pink. Uh, Arnella, I bet you it will be on sale. I'll bet you it will be. And I know that, uh, call your dealer and check because the two is just, it's great, just like the three. Just, and if you get the upgrade, they're basically the same machines, except for, there was one thing that didn't come with the upgrade. I don't remember what it was. It might be the new Move It Foot. So are we finished? Hold on, I better go back here and check. Or did I run out of thread? One or the other, but let's see what we got. No, hey, we're finished. 
if I spelled her name right. All right. So this will just tear off. Let's go ahead and rip this up. And then if you just have a seam ripper, you can uh, get that basting stitch, this long basting stitch out. It should just pull right out. So I'll go back with the seam ripper to pull out this little extra here. I'll pull away as much of this as I can, and then I just spray it with water and that comes off. But look at how cute the letters are with that blanket stitch. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so now, I only need about this much space for the pillow. So I will end up cutting, make sure you give yourself about a half inch seam allowance all the way around. I will put my ribbon up here, attach it inside just like I showed you and sandwich the back and sew it together. And that's, that's it guys. That's how easy it is to make a super fun <laughs> tooth fairy pillow, which, I can't wait to see what you guys end up using. There's so many cool fabrics. I actually have some uh, butterfly fleece right now I think would be great for this. So that's a wrap. I'll double check if I'm missing any. Uh, so fleece does use a topper at all. You know, Anne, I use a topper with most fleece uh, just because it keeps the, the threads from embedding into the fabric, but you don't have to. I use the topper to keep my letters in place. Again, there's a lot of ways you could do that. Hey, Charlene, if you wanna watch from step by step, don't forget to share it. <laughs> and that's hilarious. The Luminaire is like, hey, I don't need software. Well, but by the way, for those of you that are software gurus, uh, the new upgrade, allows you to use PE design and bring some extra fills and unique stitches to the machine. You wanna talk about opening up Pandora's box <laughs> for creativity? I just, um, and for those of you that don't watch Cindy Hogan's show on Tuesdays, she always has cool software stuff and she has a ton of stuff on PE design if you're trying to learn that. All right, any last minute questions? Otherwise, I'll tell you the show schedule. Uh, tomorrow, my show is an iffy one because I my internet has been a little weird and I have to drive up north, but I'll keep you posted if it's a no-go. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna start a Chloe Trench sew along. It's fall, I wore one at B2B, which was so comfortable, so that's gonna be coming up. So you can watch that on my page. Brother Sews has a lot coming up. I think the next live show will be next Tuesday, if I'm correct. But um, again, sign up for their newsletters and I'll put it in my newsletter too so you're not wondering where the heck are the shows. All right, everyone, I'll double check. I'm not missing last. Um, Linda, you know what? I don't know if they, if they will, but you keep asking and you never know what they might say. Oh, Shirley Image, that was the other one. Thank you, thank you. I did, Lena, I used the rotary blade to cut the felt and the fleece. It cut like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do this, the cheapest part is making the pillow. Uh, the Tooth Fairy is the one that has to spend all the money, right? So make a cute pillow, the Tooth Fairy will fill it with money and they'll lose all of their teeth. Oh, Arnell, and if you have issues with that, uh, you can email me too. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> it's always Sienna has two N's and I always forget if Kira has one R or two R's. I think I got it right, we'll see. I love that blanket stitch too. All right, everyone, I think I got all your questions. If not, ask away if you're watching the rerun because brother uh, loves to answer those too. Uh, the new app, Anne, is coming out, I believe the end of September. I don't remember the exact date, 29th maybe, 27th, 29th. And trust me, we will be totally featuring that on the live show. It's very fun, very fun. All right, everybody else? You're welcome, Debbie. <laughs> All right, everyone, I hope you have a great day. And if I don't see you, have a great weekend. Enjoy the last week of summer for some of us that have to, everyone going back to school. But 
in the meantime, brother, thanks for letting us take over your page. And all of you that love to watch it, make sure you like and share. And brother will keep doing it. All right. Bye, everyone.